Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel presenting another educational series on radiology with our first video being how to read a chest radiograph easily. Now if you notice here I have mentioned the word radiograph and not the word x-ray and that's because the x-rays are the radiations whereas the images that we see and read are called radiographs. And in general, there are four main types of tissue densities, with bones being the densiest tissues, which appear white on the radiographs, and then we have the soft tissues, which appear as light gray, and then we have the fat, which appears as dark gray, and finally we have the gas, which literally appears black, because it is the least dense tissue. However, in the medical world, we call white as radio-opaque, and we call black as radiolucent. And please remember that x-rays are simply a modality of investigation, which means we should always take into consideration the clinical presentation of the patient. Great, now let's move to the steps of reading the chest radiograph. And in general, we have seven main steps, which aim to give you an overall review on a chest radiograph, which is hopefully suitable for medical students and junior physicians. And those steps are the patient details, the projection of the chest radiograph, assessment of the technical quality, and then we look for any obvious abnormalities, and then we do a systemic review of the radiograph, and finally we summarize our findings, and if possible we look at any previous radiographs. Alright, let's get started with the patient details, and the patient details, we simply first check the full name of the patient, and check the date of birth or the age of the patient, and we verify the gender, the hospital number, and of course the date and the time taken, which is very essential, especially with inpatients, as they may have multiple chest radiographs in the same admission. And then we move to the projection of the chest radiograph. And in general, we have three main projections, but of course we have other few types. And the first one is the PA projection, which means posterior anterior projection. And this is the standard projection, and the most common one of course, but in this one, the patient must be able to stand in order to take this projection. The second type is the lateral projection, and also in this one, the patient must be able to stand up. And the last one is the AP projection, which is the anterior posterior projection. And this projection is done when the patient is sitting down or is in supine position and this is usually in hemodynamically compromised patients or ill patients however this projection is not routinely done in normal patients or in patients able to stand up because there is a false magnification of the heart and the cardiothoracic ratio now here on this slide we have a completely normal chest radiograph and it's in the standard projection which is the PA view and we should know it's a PA view because first there is no label mentioned so we assume it is a PA view which is the standard projection and the second thing is if you look at the scapulae here they are projected over the lateral aspects of the lungs so if you follow this light shadow right here on both sides it is projected over the lateral aspects of the lungs and therefore this is a PA view now compare this chest radiograph to this one if you look at this chest radiograph in general, you can notice that the heart size and the mediastinum are enlarged, and you can also see that the scapulae are taking more of the lung shadow. And this is because this is an AP chest radiograph, and it's taken in the supine position. So whenever you see your supine position, you automatically know that this is an AP chest radiograph. And by the way, an interesting fact to know is that this chest radiograph belongs to the same patient of the previous chest radiograph taken in the PA view and this to demonstrate that this patient and this chest radiograph is actually 100% normal. Fantastic, so we have just finished the patient details and the projection. Now let's move to the technical quality of the chest radiograph. And there are three things which we check for in technical quality. The first one is rotation and ideally of course the chest radiograph should not have any rotation of the patient. And that can be known if the clavicular heads are equidistant from the spinous processes of the vertebral bodies. Equidistant means that both clavicular heads are of equal distance from the spinous processes. And we will see some examples shortly. The second thing is inspiration. And ideally, you should have the sixth rib intersecting the diaphragm in the midclavicular line but anywhere from the fifth rib to the seventh rib intersecting the diaphragm and the midclavicular line is considered to be technically adequate if a higher rib than the seventh rib is intersecting the diaphragm and the midclavicular line then that indicates hyperinflation of the lungs such as in COPD 
if lower than the fifth rib is intersecting the diaphragm in the midclavicular line, then, that, then this indicates inadequate inflation or it could indicate that the chest radiograph has been taken during expiration. And we will see examples for those shortly as well. And the third part of the technical quality is to check for penetration of the x-rays. And adequate penetration means you should see the vertebral bodies behind the heart. If you cannot see the vertebral bodies behind the heart, then the film is underpenetrated and the film will actually look too wide. If the vertebral bodies are easily seen behind the heart or the lungs are too black, then this indicates that the film is overpenetrated, as we will be seeing shortly. Here we have a normal chest radiograph, and to assess for technical quality, first thing is to check for rotation, and you can see that both clavicles are equidistant from the spinous processes, so this means that this patient is not rotated. And the second thing is inspiration, and that's by counting the anterior ribs. Now this ribs that you see like this going horizontally, those are actually the posterior ribs, and this makes sense because first they are horizontal, and that's how they are inserted into the vertebral column, and the second thing, they are more clear than the anterior one, which are kind of descending towards the midline. And the reason that the posterior ribs are more clear is that because they are closer to the film as this is a PA chest radiograph. So again, back to our point, to check for inspiration, you should have the sixth rib intersecting the midclavicular line. So let's count the anterior ribs. So that's one, that's going downwards to the midline, and that's the second rib, two, and that's the third one, three, and then fourth, and then the fifth, and then the sixth. And so this is the sixth rib and exactly intersecting the diaphragm right here which is in the mid clavicular line. If you can draw a line from here upwards that's approximately the midline of the clavicle. So this is adequate inspiration. And the last part is to check for penetration and we can easily see the vertebral spine behind the heart and this film is adequately penetrated because we can see the vertebral spine behind the heart. Great, now let's move to the next chest radiograph, and this is the same one which we have seen previously when we talked about the AP projection. But if you notice, this chest radiograph is actually also rotated because you can see the clavicular heads are not equidistant from the spinous processes. So this is the spinous process, and you can see it's much closer to the right side than to the left side, and this means that the patient is rotated, and this can give you false enlargement of the heart size and false consolidation. And the second thing is that this patient has not achieved adequate inspiration because the sixth rib is not intersecting the midline. So the ribs are actually not very clear here but you can still appreciate them. So this is the first one and this is the second rib and this is the third and this is the fourth and this is the fifth and this is the sixth. So you can see that the sixth is far away from the midline of the diaphragm so this is not adequately inspirated chest radiograph and that explains the apparent interstitial infiltrates in the lung fields which are actually false and here we have another chest radiograph showing an example of under penetration of the x-rays so if you see this vertebral column behind the heart it's not really visible because there is under penetration and here we have another example of over penetration of the x-rays and that can be known from the easily visible vertebral column behind the heart and also the lung fields are too black and they have lost their bronchovascular markings. Perfect, so we have just finished the technical quality of the chest radiographs and now moving into how to identify obvious abnormalities in a chest radiograph. And this means what is the main problem or what is the main focus of disease that we notice? And to describe that focus or that lesion, we need some descriptive terms or measures. So right here, I'm giving you the easiest way and the most important terms that we need to use in order to describe a certain lesion. So the first thing is the side. Is it right-sided or left-sided or bilateral in both lungs? And the second thing is the side. Is the lesion in the upper zone of the lungs or the middle zone or the lower zone? So we actually use the word zone in lungs because it's not really the lobes that we're looking for as the zones are easier to describe as we see them on the chest radiographs. And the third thing is the shape. So what is the shape of the lesion? Is it round? Is it oval? Is it speculated? Is it diffused? Is it localized? Etc. And the fourth thing is the texture which is, is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? 
and the fifth thing is the size and the last thing is the density so is it an opacity or a lucency so let's take a quick example and see how we apply those descriptive terms so right here we have a chest radiograph and the lesion is indicated by the black arrow right here so to describe this lesion first thing we would say this is a right-sided lesion because what you see as left on the radiographs are actually right in reality and vice versa and the second thing is that this is a middle zone lesion so it's in the right side and it's in the middle zone and the third thing it kind of looks like oval in shape so it's oval and the fourth thing commenting on the texture it looks like homogeneous so uniform opacities all over the lesion and the fifth thing is the size so we can approximately say this is two by three centimeters and the last thing is the density so this is obviously an opacity or an opaque lesion so to give a complete description of this lesion we would say this is a right-sided middle zone oval shaped homogeneous two by three centimeters opacity or opaque lesion but of course there are also other terms that are used but these are the most important ones that we should not miss when we describe a lesion on a chest radiograph fantastic now let's move to the outline so we have finished the patient details the projection the technical quality and the obvious abnormalities description and now moving to the systematic review of the radiograph and in the systematic review we basically look at the following things first thing is the airway which is of course the trachea and pretty much the most important thing is to know whether it is central or deviated the second thing is the breathing which is looking at the lung fields so we inspect all of the lung fields and look for any lesions and in the lung fields we should pay special attention to the apices the hyla and the claustrophrenic angles because those areas are commonly missed and then C for cardiac and the mediastinum and we will look for here is the heart size and looking for any mediastinum widening such as in masses or hemorrhage and then we check the diaphragm and the right diaphragm is slightly higher than the left one because of the liver on the right side and it's very important to look for air under the diaphragm especially on the right side because it is easier to be detected on the right side as we have the gastric bubble on the left side which could be confused with air under the diaphragm and air under the diaphragm is a surgical emergency as it indicates viscous perforation and another D is for delicates and delicates include few other things such as the bones which are the ribs and the sternum and the clavicles and of course the shoulder joints and the proximal arms and it also includes checking for the soft tissues and for tubes and lines such as the endotracheal tube the nasogastric tube etc and this explains why it is called a chest radiograph and not a lung radiograph as the chest includes other things other than the lungs themselves and finally we check for effusions but typically we check for the effusions along with the lung fields when we were checking the lungs in B and of course usually the effusions will be seen at the cost of phrenic angles great so now let's take a quick example and apply what we have just learned so here we have a completely normal chest radiograph the same one which we have seen previously the same one which we have seen a few minutes ago and now let's apply the systematic review on this chest radiograph so the first thing is the airway which is the trachea and we can see that the trachea is central and not deviated to any of the sides and the second thing is the breathing and in breathing we inspect the lung fields for any lesions with paying special attention to the apices which appear clear in here and then we see the hyla and here we can see clearly the bronchovascular markings in both hyla and finally we assess the costophrenic angles for any effusions and you can probably also look at the retrocardiac shadow which is any of the lung fields behind the heart such as here you can see slightly some of the lung fields behind the heart in both sides as sometimes the lesions hide behind the heart and finally you can look at the lung fields right under the diaphragms as some of the lung fields are also covered by the diaphragm and now let's move to C which is cardiac and the mediastinum and the most important thing is to look for cardiomegaly which is defined as the maximal transverse cardiac diameter being greater than 50% of the maximal internal transverse thoracic diameter so simply just measure the longest transverse diameter which is let's say from this point almost towards this point and then this should be smaller than 50% from this point almost to this point and then moving to D which is the diaphragm and the delicates so you can see that the right diaphragm is slightly higher than the left one and we cannot see any free air under the diaphragm except for this little bit here which is actually the gastric bubble the air inside the stomach 
and finally E for effusions and again we've said there are no effusions blunting the costophrenic angles perfect so this is all for the systematic review of the chest radiograph and finally what we do is summarize the most important positive and negative findings found in the chest radiograph which is done after all of the previous steps and finally we we should definitely always ask for previous radiographs in our patients as it's very important to compare for any differences or progressions that would be all for this video on how to read the chest radiograph. I would like to give a special thanks to this book, The Unofficial Guide to Radiology, which has helped me a lot during my studies and for my exams and also for preparing this video. And I honestly highly recommend for all the students to get this book as it's very, very helpful and it's very easy to read. And I would like to thank you all for watching this video and please look at my next video on how to read a chest radiograph in less than one minute by simply putting an example of a chest radiograph and following all of the previous steps which we have explained. Thank you very much and I wish you a great day ahead.